Let's welcome former Met outfielder Ron Swoboda. He is out with a new book, Here's the Catch, a memoir of the Miracle Mets, and more. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for being here, and former CBS2 sportscaster. You know, I came right off the ball diamond, and I was downstairs when the newsroom was on the first floor with uh, Rollins Smith and Dave Marish, who is still a friend of mine. Yeah. And Jim Jensen was the anchor guy at uh, 6 o'clock. Yeah, well, welcome back. We appreciate it's having you. It's great to be you. here. So, first of all, let me ask you, because we showed a clip of you from yesterday at yes. City Field. What was it like yesterday, the big ceremony honoring 50, ye 50 years? Well, you know, it was it's awesome. 50 years, where does it go? Yeah, um, but right. to be back with the guys that we had played with that, you know, we don't see as often as we would like. And, and so many people turned out and made us feel pretty special. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about your new book, Here's the yes. Catch. It was re really interesting to read and, and fascinating when you say you were signed with the Mets and you write, to say the Mets were a bad team is an enormous understatement of the word <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, but that was the sales pitch they said to me. Right. It was an expansion team from 1962 and they needed players badly. Um, yes. They had lost 120 games under Casey Stengel and that is still the gold standard for terrible in the right. major leagues. Yeah, exactly. Okay? So they said, you got a chance to get to the big leagues sooner, and I did. I played one year of minor league baseball, and I'm in New York playing for Casey Stengel in 1965. So it happened very quickly. And you also write about the stupidest thing you ever did in your life involving Gil Hodges. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I had a fractious relationship with Gil Hodges, who was... The, the manager. At, in, yeah. Gil Hodges was the best thing that ever happened to the Mets and we don't win in 1969 and we're not wearing these rings without Gil Hodges and yeah Tom Seaver and Jerry Kuzman and our yeah. pitching staff didn't hurt either but Hodges was a authoritarian and I've always had a tough time with authoritarian and right. all he wanted you to do was be a grown-up, you know, act like a, a mature adult and make yourself the best player you can make yourself. And I could do some of that some of the time, <laughs> yeah. but not all of it all of the time. And it's all on me. Right. Because he had one of the most adroit baseball minds I've ever been around. He, yeah. was, he was an amazing guy, a Marine right. in World War II who was on Tinian Island before my dad, who was uh, a gunner in a B-29 crew, came later in March of 1945. I discovered that in the research yeah, for my book. Because a, a lot of the book talks about, you know, during 1969, it was during Vietnam, and, yes. and what was going on in the world when the Mets were able to pull this off. How? Talk a little bit first about the catch, your famous catch in Game 4. Looking back well, on it now, what yeah. goes through your mind? <laughs> well... It's my most graceful moment. And, you know, graceful is not a word that people used in a sentence with me uh, back then as an outfielder. And I worked at it. Eddie Yost, our third base coach, hit me thousands of line drives, ground balls left right over my mm -hmm. head. And I worked at it. And it culminated in that catch in the ninth inning in game four. And you see me come up and throw because it was first and third, one out. We had a one-run lead. And it turned into a pretty exciting sacrifice fly because, Frank Frank Robinson tagged up and tied the game, scoring from third base. Yeah. So uh, it was the best play I ever made in my life. <laughs> right. Uh, how wonderful to be. I'm 75 today. I just turned today. 75. And how nice to be more known for the best thing you ever did than the five times you struck out in a game earlier in the well, year. Happy birthday to you. And really quickly, what is the what is the message? Because Met fans, it's 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 tough to be a Met fan today. What's the message? And what is your kind of advice? It can happen faster than you think. Yeah. And the pieces come in place, you know. They're not that far off now. I am a Met fan, and I suffered like last night when, right. they lost once last again, night. Middle Relief couldn't hold a lead. But it can happen faster than you think if you keep the pieces together. Tug McGraw said it best in uh, 1973. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. Yeah. Think, and you have a book signing today. I'm gonna be out holders. at the ballpark today signing books. I'll be out on the 2nd uh, of July. 
Thank you so much for being you, here. Andrew. And you know what? We knew it was your 75th birthday, so we have a special guest who came in all the way from City Field for you. <laughs> Mr. Met, here, stand oh, up with this. me, Ron. Look at this. Mr. Met came in all the way from Flushing to wish you a happy birthday with you a special are cake. awesome. Happy birthday, Ron. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Met. Welcome. We awesome. appreciate you being here. Are you doing this is it? Perfect. Are you doing anything special? You just special? made my day. I was going to say, are you doing anything special today for your birthday? Um, well, you know, I'm going to go out the ballpark and, and try to root that team on a little bit. And see we need them do. to win. Thank you, yes. Ron, for being here. Thank you, Mr. Met. You're going to stick around. And for more on uh, the book and everything, head to our website, cbsnewyork.com.